Welcome back. We are so excited about this series that you're doing, Jason. And you know, some of the best conversations happen over a good meal. It just opens you up, doesn't it? Exactly. <laughs> you know, growing up, you know, your best conversations happen around the dinner table. Yeah. And that's kind of the idea I wanted to explore this Black History Month. Speaking with Apollo Woods with OKC Black Eats, he's been really helpful on all of this. We wanted to highlight the amazing black culinary offerings here in the city and also speak to some of the unheralded black heroes right here in our metro. Yeah, having these conversations mm -hmm. over a great meal. So tell us about your first interview, which was with uh, Dr. Betty Mason. Okay, so Dr. Mason, she is amazing. She was inducted into the Oklahoma Educators Hall of Fame back in 1999. Her experience spans across multiple states, but she made the biggest impact right here in Oklahoma. Take a look, I met with her at Off the Hook Seafood in South OKC. <laughs> So I'm going to take a spoon of this. And I'm going to take a bite of this. <laughs> I want to hear about your life. Is that right? Mm hmm Who is Dr. Betty Mason? I grew up in Tulsa, Oklahoma. One of six children to Stacy and Carrie Hopkins. I finished Booker T. Washington High School. You were saying you were born seven years after the Tulsa Race Massacre. Your mother and your, your family, they were in the middle of the riots. Her mother came home from work saying, get your things, we got to go. You were saying that you never heard about it until you got to college. That's right. Why? I guess that's a question I never directly asked my mother. I think it speaks to the times. I think it speaks to the level of fear and discomfort that our people had at that time. I think it also speaks to how strongly they worked to get out from under that kind of atmosphere. I had a great time in Tulsa. When I went off to college at Bishop College in Marshall, Texas, my mother packed us up and moved the family to Kansas City, Kansas. I was heartbroken because I loved Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> and reason I too graduated in 49, <laughs> came back to Kansas City, I taught school in Kansas, City, Kansas public schools, fourth grade for one year. Married a guy I had I'd met in college, moved to Dallas, Texas. And I think it was in Dallas when race became a factor. The personnel director or the superintendent, one or the other, told me, these schools are turning out too many Negro teachers. We can't hire them all. You are not from Texas. So I became a secretary in an elementary school. Kansas City, Missouri had just gotten a new personnel director. And he has encouraged us to get help get some more minority teachers in this school district. He said, Bet, I thought about you. You need to be over here teaching school. I said, okay, what do you want me to do? So I went to Kansas City, Missouri and started teaching school. So you could not stay, you could not keep away from education. That That's was right. Great. I want to talk about your work here in Oklahoma. I came back and I ultimately became superintendent. Superintendent of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma City Public Schools here. I passed an $89 million bond issue, which was the largest bond issue that had ever been passed in the state of Oklahoma. Class in SAS. It's because of you. Right. How did that, how did that come about? I had a granddaughter in a middle school, getting ready to go to a high school. And I couldn't decide which one of those schools were good enough for her to go to. As I and Guy Sconzo, who was my assistant superintendent, began to talk about this, it evolved around um, gifted and talented talent as well as gifted and talented minds, you know. And so we came up with this class in school of advanced studies. So when we were running the bond issue, that was one of the components in it, to have this SAS school. People ate it up and it went well. It, it was registered the 13th most progressive high school in the United States. What was your number one takeaway? What was the biggest thing you learned when it comes to education? I think the biggest thing that I learned in all that experience was we misjudge our children. I just think if we need to start telling children that they can do it. They can rise to the top. Because when I was teaching reading, that's when I came to that true realization. 
when I was teaching reading, I was telling these kids, don't you know you can read this and say nothing? You know, <laughs> come on here, let's start right here. And, and, and I would put the names of things on things in the classroom, like chair, book, blah, 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 you know. And I said, this is not hard to do. You just haven't tried hard enough. I'm telling you, I had parents to come and see me. I had one woman come and cry on my shoulders, telling me how much I had. That's, I think that's the major thing that I learned. It's there. Yeah. Give, give the children the confidence to do it. I, I gotta ask, um, so you're how old now, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, I'm, I'm 91, I'll be 92 in 30 days. 92 in 30 days, <laughs> happy early birthday. Thank you. No chance of you getting back into teaching. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I enjoy sleeping until 12 o'clock too much for that. <laughs> oh, we, Dr. Mason! We had quite the conversation, and I love what she said about educating. That's why I asked her if she would get back into education, because she, she had that vision and that passion to teach yeah. kids, and, and she didn't want to give up on them. She was talking about how we, we underestimate our kids. They can do it. They can learn. We just got to yes. show that confidence in them. It, it was a beautiful story, Jason. So Thank well you. told and loved hearing her and this living legacy now that's captured and will live on yeah, forever. Exactly. Her words, and I love that too, that she said, we underestimate our children. And I think you're so right. We. We, we just do, and I think uh, her words were beautiful. So well done. Yeah, I, I And the meal was that. amazing, right? And the meal was amazing. <laughs> uh, the, the folks at, uh, so at Off the Hook uh, prepared us an amazing meal. And I look forward to having more of these conversations because, I, as I said, you can get a lot out of people and learn a lot about people by just sharing a meal with them. Yeah, you all are friends now. We look forward <laughs> to uh, your continued friendship. Absolutely. Well, love you, Dr. Mason.